contribution he gives to them, that everything they did uh, had particular meaning, from their dress to their crowns to their gifts to their names, to the places from which they came. We have all sorts of ideas about the, the star and how uh, they might have received guidance from the star and what exactly the star might have been. And the truth to many of those things is that we just simply do not know. We don't exactly know who these men were from the East. Matthew tells us that they were wise men, perhaps kings, if you will, but certainly representatives of kings and rulers, if not kings themselves. They were obviously men of great wealth from somewhere far to the east, probably Zoroastrian in religion, worshiping the god of Guru Mazda. They followed the stars. They were not only primitive astronomers, knowing the movement of all of the heavenly bodies, but they were astrologers as well, associating important characteristics, and perhaps uh, uh, foretellings to those movements and those appearances of stars or comets or the alignment of planets. But who they were, we know little more. Further, Matthew tells us that we're not sure that these wise men arrived at the side of the manger like we uh, hold as one of our cherished parts of the, the manger scene or the retelling of the Christmas story, the Christmas pageant. Why, Matthew tells us that uh, uh, the Holy Family, Joseph and Mary and Jesus, were, were in a house. And we know from Herod's response as he tries to ascertain the exact time of the, the star, the exact time when they would have begun this journey and uh, attempting to uh, find out exactly when this child, the potential Messiah, would have been born, uh, Herod backs up as, as insurance and, and gives himself a two-year period in which this Messiah might have been born. So the visit of the wise men, though we celebrated at Christmas time or shortly thereafter, may have come sometime later. But no doubt Matthew is wanting us to pick up on several important things. That these who are outside of Israel see what the God of Israel is doing. That they come humbly worshiping, seeking, and bringing great gifts to the family. It's probable, in fact, that these gifts do have uh, some uh, symbolism of what is going to happen in revealing who Jesus is and, and what his life is going to be like. But in a practical matter, these are probably the gifts that sustain the family as they escape Herod and go down to Egypt and dwell. After all, a carpenter is dependent on a local reputation, isn't he? And it's difficult to move from place to place and, and find work. So these gifts have a, an immediate practical effect as well. All of that being said, Matthew still points us in a, a distinctly different direction. He's interested for us to note these things about the wise men and their visit. But what he really wants us to take note of is their response in contrast to the response of King Herod. See, what he really wants to tell us is that here is the reaction of great power to the coming of the Messiah. He wants us to know the different reactions of King Herod with these kings or representatives of kings from the east. For these represent great power, the kingdoms of the world, as it were. And now in the midst of their reign, their hold on power, comes the Messiah. As a 
vulnerable infant. The parents, not of great stature. And here in, in this vulnerable state, we see the reactions of power to what God is doing. You see, on the one hand, we have the wise men, who though they are not within the people of Israel, nevertheless, they, they see and sense something that the God of the Jews is doing. God, in fact, speaks to them in the story in a dream and warns them, and they're sensitive to that. They're open to that. Their hearts are, are seeking and listening and humble before God. They've taken great pains to come on this journey. Not an easy thing in the ancient world. They've put their treasures at risk. They've put their very lives at risk to take this arduous journey and come and now perhaps place themselves in a hostile situation with the resident king of Israel. And these wise men Though they say very little, it's obvious that they are following God's leading. And that's what Matthew wants us to know. Here are the ones that for all intents and purposes should not really have, have noticed and taken note, should not really have laid down their treasure in their lives to give worship to this Messiah, for he's, he's not within their sphere. <coughs> And yet what God is doing is so great that it commands the attention of the nations. And it commands the worship. It commands the service of even these great kings of the East. And he wants to put that in stark contrast to what Herod's response is. For Herod's response is indicative of what is going to follow within Israel to all that the Messiah does, to all that he says, to all that he represents of God. And Herod is first out of the gate. Now in the ancient world, it's not unusual for someone to ruthlessly, perhaps even viciously, put down all pretenders to the throne. And that often meant killing one's own household, one's brothers, one's own 